How's it going everybody? As you can see I have quite the monster in front of me. This is the Echo One M249 Mark II. Uh, I've had this gun for about uh, I think about two years now and I, and for the last uh, year and a half it was actually broken. Or at least I thought it was. I thought there was something horribly wrong with the internals of this gun but it was actually just jammed and I was too lazy to actually look down the damn barrel. So, yeah, um, quick little guide, uh, look down your barrel, see if it's jammed. Uh, the reason I didn't think it was jammed and it was something else is because it was making a really weird noise, it was like a really bassy, uh, sound when it fired, uh, didn't seem like BBs were feeding, but, uh, turns out it was actually just jammed. I know, really big laziness on my part, I apologize for that, but this gun is absolutely fantastic when it comes to a squad automatic weapon or a saw. So, quick little note on the durability of this gun, it feels amazing. Everything that should be metal on this gun is metal, everything that should be plastic is plastic to keep the weight down and uh, to make it a bit more usable. That is one thing though, this gun is very heavy for just an average player who just wants to go out there and have fun. And that's where you're going to kind of run into run into issues with who to recommend this to is the fact that not everyone wants to go out there with something this heavy. I mean, a lot of people like the idea of being a a saw gunner. And it's fun as hell. But if you're not actually prepared to lug around something this frickin' weighty, um, you know, I think you need to look to something else or look to a lighter submachine gun, or submachine gun, a squad automatic weapon. But this thing does feel very durable and very fantastic. And I would like to say before this, I actually did own the A&K M249, so I'm actually going to do a comparison of the two um, here in a bit. Uh, first of all, uh, I do not actually have the original box mag that came with it. This is a different one, and that is because it comes with the A&K box mag, and I personally believe that those are absolute rubbish. I had one with my ANK M249, and it has three settings. Constantly winding, off, and sound activated winding. The problem with sound activation is it doesn't work. Basically how it's supposed to work is it's supposed to recognize the sound of your gearbox uh, turning, and because of that, it winds the mag. But it never worked for me, and it saw very little use before it came into my hands. It basically came out of the box, didn't work, and I got the gun knowing it didn't work. And I hated it. And I've heard other stories of people having the exact same issue. So, if you're looking to invest in the ANK M249, I would very much take note of the fact that your sound activated winding probably is going to be a little bit twitchy, at least. But, that's not that big of an issue if you're fine with just sticking normal Armalite mags into your gun, because it can take those. Uh, or, if you're just looking to invest in a different box mag, please do so, because that's not a bad idea. This one is simply, if you can hear that, it's just simply a button wound. I have that wired up to uh, the handguard up front, and it works brilliantly. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, probably my biggest gripe with this gun, I'm going to say right now, is the battery compartment, which is in the stock, and I'm fine with that. The location is great. What I do have a problem with is the fact that you need an Allen key to get in there. Now, I'm going to, once again, use my little friend the UMP here as my guinea pig. Now, where would you think the battery would be located on this? You know, it could be up front, um, could be on the top, like on some AKs. It's actually in a compartment right inside the body of the gun, and you just open a latch with the stock open, battery goes in there, plug it in, close it shut. It's fantastic. I love it. It's quick. It's simple. And you, re and you require zero tools to get in there. This one, you need an Allen key to get in unless you're just planning on taping it shut or something like that. But you either need to be sure that you're going out into the field with a fully charged battery, or if you're not sure that your battery's fully charged and you have a spare one on you, you need Allen keys to get in there. And it's just, it's just that little thing, which is just enough of a pain in the ass that makes me just kind of irritated. But everything else on this gun is just fun to mess around with. It's, it's durable. It's, it's fancy. I have so few complaints about what Echo One 
uh, did when they made this thing. You open this up here and open up that and that is your gearbox and it's actually really easy to take out if you know what you're doing. There's a few screws you remove on the side of the gun and it just lifts right out. It's really simple. I love getting to the gearbox of these. I'll show you a video of opening your gearbox uh, here in a while once I have the time, but I do like to stress if you are going to take the gearbox out of your M249, be really careful because there's a, there's a good chance you actually might break your air nozzle off on the inner barrel. And I've heard horror stories of that and it's not fun because guess what, you need to go ahead and replace a few parts when that happens. But when you're done in there, set that down, pull back the uh, bolt, push both buttons on the side, release the bolt and you're good to go. Uh, right now I do have the bipod foregrip on here, that's not what I normally have on there, it's just kind of for convenience of displaying this thing. And what I've actually, what I, what's actually on here right now is aftermarket RIS. Uh, and that's basically just to allow foregrip instead of the bipod. I mean, you can still have a bipod on here, but uh, my personal thing with bipods is uh, they're neat, but they're not that neat in terms of using them in the middle of a game. Uh, foregrips, it's just, it's way easier for, um, you know, kind of getting rid of some of the bulkiness and load of this gun. If you're just carrying it with a foregrip, it's just, it's just, it's a lot easier on your arms, on your, on your back, on everything. I just... To me, it's just so much more useful. I would highly recommend it. But, I mean, some people just really like the aesthetics of a bipod and they like the functionality of it, too. I mean, it's it's great for that. I've used, I mean, I've used a bipod on the A&K, and it was great. I really did think it was fun. It's just, foregrips are so much better on saws for me, personally. Uh, there are a few other little nifty things about it, like the fact that, you know, the heat shield is removable and you got your barrel exposed there. Personally, I do just like keeping the heat shield on, but that's just preference. Uh, carry handle uh, is plastic, and it's a little rickety, but it's not that bad. It's still very usable and carryable. Stock is plastic, uh, as is the handle, and that's pretty much it. There's a few other minor plastic things on here. I believe the uh, uh, handguard on the original uh, Echo one is actually plastic, however this one is metal as it is aftermarket. Uh, paint job was actually done by a friend of mine, previous owner, and I think he did a pretty good job. It's definitely seen some wear and tear since then. Uh, if you're going to mount a sling to this thing, uh, be prepared to have a hell of a lot of weight resting on your neck and shoulders. Basically you've got a sling mount back here which has now been fitted with paracord just for easier access to it. and. Um, You've got holes up front here, which also work great for sling mounts. Uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to your choices for sling mounts, unfortunately. So you got way back and very close to the front, so the sling is going to be very spread out. They don't actually have any around the middle section of the gun, which is... that's fine. I mean, you are pr you pretty much know what you're getting into when it comes to the bulkiness of this gun, so you probably don't want too much of it resting on your neck and shoulders, that's going to be very, very bad for you. Price for this thing clocks in at about um, mid-300s to about like 370. Um, and that's not terrible, especially for something this solid. It chronos at about 330 to 340, and that's fine for a squad automatic weapon, especially for me. I'm okay with just having something which has a primary function of just putting bullets down range, allowing for teammates to do their thing, to sneak up, to move to cover, because that's what your primary goal is going to be as a saw gunner. You are the person who puts bolts down range to get people to get their heads down so that your friends can do their job. You're not doing too much of a job of killing or uh, or rushing people for that matter. You're pretty much, you find a spot, you sit there, you put bullets down range. I know there's, there's exceptions, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to being a saw gunner, that seems to be the the primary goal of being a saw gunner. So, 330 FPS is fine for that. And, uh, I definitely wouldn't complain about the price either. Especially, uh, considering the upper division uh, saws co come probably about 450 to 500 or so. I think they've definitely dropped in price, especially with A and K bringing out the M60s and the M249s. Those clock in about, um, 280, I think. 
for a price, and that's not bad. I think you definitely get what you pay for. I really think that A&K doesn't put as much care into their guns as Echo 1 does. Echo 1 has really surprised me in terms of their guns, and this gun is no exception. I think it's just a brilliant, brilliant saw. I think it's something that could be great for a starter gun. I mean, I know the price is pretty hefty, but with the box mag that does come with it and the functionality of using Armalite mags, I think getting this gun on its own, I think that's a great start for someone looking to get into being a saw gunner. I th would still highly recommend getting just like a basic assault rifle to start off with, but if you are really hankering to give being a saw gunner a try for your first go, I think this is definitely where you should look into. I think try and find something that's um, maybe secondhand. I think I think these things can definitely take a lot of wear and tear, so I think you're going to be fine getting something secondhand because it's probably going to be very functional as opposed to an A and K. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to say about this thing. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you later.